Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the 11th presentation of BA Slash. If you're new to BA Slash, welcome again. A quick introduction of me. I'm Monique Ho. Um, I started this BA Slash community last year, aiming to generate a movement to encourage knowledge and experience exchange, regardless of organizational boundaries. My day job is a business consultant at BA Systems Applied Intelligence helping organizations with their digital products, innovation, um, cybersecurity operations, and agile transformation. So apart from Alan, our, our usual phase, uh, BA Slash has a new organizer, Marianne. Would you both like to introduce yourselves? Maybe Marianne first. Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome to BA Slash. Um, my name is Marianne Sears. I'm a BA, uh, been working as BA for must be more than 10 years. In the last five plus years, I've been mainly focused working in um, agile environment. And my most of my experience has mainly been in the finance sector. But I became a contractor in 2017 and I've worked in charity, nonprofit, government, and back to finance. And currently I'm at uh, BP. Great, cool, thank you. And Alan. Hi everyone, Alan Wishart. Um, I've been a BA involved in software development for probably 20 years now. Um, I'm currently working for uh, an insure tech called FinTech OS, uh, where I'm the product owner for insurance. That's great, thank you both. Yeah, and if you like BA Slash, please spread the word with your contacts, tweet us, follow us on LinkedIn, on YouTube, every post, every tweet you made, make us go further. And just to say thank you to those who share this event with your network by email and social media. This really helps us reach more fellows to exchange ideas. And yeah, the next slide is the, um, the event that we had two weeks ago. So it's a, it's a great celebration with lots of you uh, using spatial chat for our first birthday. So some of you provided some thoughts on the direction of BA slash moving forwards. And we also had some very good conversations on anti-patterns of Agile. We didn't do any recordings for those discussions because we thought it would be good to to make people feel comfortable to share as much um, as they, they want in the, the event. Um, but we do have a summary of one of the discussions on, on Medium. So please check it out. Um, I'm trying to put the, the links in the uh, chat as well. So you can go have, have a look of the article. Um, we are still collecting some suggestions on how to run the community together. So um, do, put some ideas in on the, the suggestion um, links. And yeah, and looking forward to, to your ideas. Today, it's really great to have Sally with us to share her experiences. So Sally has been very supportive to, to BA Slash from the start. I still recall you attended the, our first event on Lightning Decision Jam. I think I, when, I, when I did the first event, I, I was wondering, okay, would anybody turn up for the event? So thank you very much for for showing up, yeah. And also you attended nearly all the events as well. So a big thank you to, to you. But let's invite Sally to the virtual stage. Thank you very much to, um, for coming to this session. Um, I'm um, a bit of an unusual um, character for BS Slash because I'm not actually trained as a BA, but I have worked in lots of different capacities over the years and find that I have done an awful lot of um, the tasks that constitute business analysis. And if I go to my first slide, who am I? I'm a legal technologist. And I call myself that quite often because I have background in technology and I've also qualified as a lawyer, but I very quickly realized that I was more interested in the systems that lawyers use than in pursuing a career in legal practice. 
So this is the first time I've actually been employed as a BA with BA as my job title or part of my job title. But I do bring in to that role a lot of the um, skills and knowledge that I've developed over the years. Very varied BA experience from working as a computer contractor, working in industry in various guises. And at heart, I'm actually a linguist. Now that takes me way back. But it means that one of the things that I've always got an ear open for is language whenever I'm working in the sort of BA type role. And I have learned never trust the first word you find. So in the old days, when I was leafing through a dictionary, I would always leaf back the other way and make sure that I wasn't talking about donkeys instead of butter or whatever other faux pas you might encounter in, in other languages. So I'm, I'm pretty rigorous with that kind of thing, but it makes me very much attuned to situations in which you've got people who maybe are talking about the same thing, but using very different words and making sure that they understand what they're, what they're doing. And that's been a common thread in a lot of the work that I've done. Um, I've been working as a contractor for the last um, two and a half years. So I thought coming as a bit of an interloper on BA, I'd have a look at BA expertise. I found a source called Data Art and it had some nice um, descriptions of what a BA would be good at. So analyzing, documenting, managing requirements. Converting vague bits and pieces into structured information. That's my favorite one partly because that's where I usually find myself in the middle of a bunch of people who've all come from different backgrounds, maybe all have different agendas, might be on the same team, but they're all giving me sort of snippets of information or their personal agendas. And my job is to try and find some structure and common ground. Proficiency requirements modeling, again, it's a similar sort of thing, and um, that's one of the things that I bring to the table from the software background. And then communication, which is a big one. Project stakeholders aligning expectations. So I tend to be the person in the middle. I understand from the legal context what the lawyers are wanting. I also understand what's realistic, and I can talk to the IT people and find out, can you really do this? And sometimes I've got an inkling as to the fact that they can do it and just pushing a bit. So I'm not going to teach you a lot about being a BA because I know that's what you do. But I also know it covers a multitude of sins and a common thread for me in all that is the language that people are using when they're talking and working together. So just picking up my two favorites from the previous slide. These are the two that I like when it comes to dealing with language. So focus on vocabulary and why. It's largely just because we all work with words. So stating the obvious, but multiple parties to a project. And that really does mean multiple interpretations. And it's interesting because since I started preparing this talk, Every day I've encountered situations where we're dealing with language and having to clarify what we mean by things. Um, just in the last week, I've been dealing with created dates and um, I've also been, been dealing with status and the fact that some people are talking about documents and some refer to it as a file and they really don't realize they're talking about the same thing. So um, I've always got my ear open for that. And yes, it's very easy to sign off on a task while making assumptions. We're all very busy. You tend to use standard forms and send it to someone. Have you signed off on that? Yes. And make sure that you really understand what, what's being done and what assumptions people are making. And for me, that very often comes down to language. So, this is my rather 
um, <laughs> amateur effort at doing a crossword clue here. So an argument divided into puzzles. And some of you, if any of you do crosswords, you probably guess what, what it is. So an argument, cross, sword, cross swords, and then dividing into puzzles. This is something that came in the press about a week and a half ago, and it was a crossword compiler who himself can't actually solve crosswords. And you read about this person, he's actually an incredible polymath. He can do all kinds of things, very technically difficult um, things in his career, and he compiles crosswords. But what he can't do is solve his own crosswords. So when they turned up in the newspaper, which in his case is the New York Times, he, he didn't know how to solve them. And there's a crossword competition that comes up every year in the States and he's entered it. And he's designed Dr. Phil. This is a program that he's created to win a puzzle competition. Large training sets, so using AI, brute force matching. Those are my terms, but I think he, he called it crude or primitive himself. So I'm, I'm not um, being too rude about it. But he had 10 goes with this program at winning the puzzle competition, saying, I can win it with my computer. And he failed each time. And he got his breakthrough last year because in lockdown, there's a team at the Natural Language Processing Group at University of California at Berkeley who decided to do a lockdown project with their knowledge of natural language processing and the fact that they really have a much better understanding of how language works. And they managed to succeed. So last year was his breakthrough. He actually managed to win the competition with the program. And this one sort of speaks to me in so many ways, partly because it's all to do with words and language, but also because if you think as a BA, how would you be analysing this project if you were thinking, I want to help somebody design a program to win a puzzle competition. Because you've got somebody that's approaching it with a training set, someone else has got the natural language processing skills. At the same time, this is a US newspaper. And actually there's a difference between the way in which crosswords are created in the US and the UK. So the UK has a lot more play on words and anagrams. The US has a lot of lateral thinking. So they're both quite challenging, but in different, in different ways. So I like it because it's about words, but also because it sort of looks at the assumptions that you might make if you weren't careful. So this is one of a few polls that I'm going to throw at you. And um, thank you, Alan. Um, yes, what is the workflow? You have the options. So and we'll, we'll, we'll give you a little while just to yeah. uh, complete this. So uh, Sally can see what you think. And I'd say with all of these, there is no right and wrong answer. All right, do you want me to end the poll? I'll, I'll, I'll end that for you. And You'll end it for me. Thank, thank you very much. OK, so top answer is the first one, a sequence of steps to achieve a task. The second one, a way to specify a process. That interests me because, it, yes, the first two, I think, are the most likely. But I have also seen people saying, I'll do a workflow for this, and they come up with a flow chart. So it very much depends on where you come from, what, what you're used to seeing, and what your interpretation is, and possibly how many people are actually going to be involved in the process that you're um, having to put in place. 
But thank you for that. And again, I, re I emphasize that is no, I share the results. There is no right and wrong answer to any of these. Okay. So next, the spoken word. Okay, so everyone's present. Really powerful, you all hear the same thing. What have you heard? Yes, this is a good one. We've all changed to agile working. Now, that's really good because it allows we understand each other. And I know when you're introducing yourselves, BA slash um, stalwarts, that some of you referred to agile working. But actually, the customer might th mean something totally different. And I've worked for a few law firms recently who have all talked about working in an agile way and they've got no idea that their IT department means something different by agile. They're talking about people moving around between teams and doing something that law firms traditionally haven't done, which is actually working together across teams. And of course, with the COVID situation, a lot of people are referring to agile working to mean working from home sometimes and working different hours. So it's one of those things, even something that is actually quite well understood, at least for BAs and um, IT people could um, be subject to misinterpretation. So next poll. I've given you too many clues on this one, <laughs> but please do it. Okay, right, thank you. You can see the results. So most people have said project management methodology, but some people have come up with a flexible working. And that's, you know, that could be that that's exactly what your customers are thinking about. So make sure if they're talking about agile, you're not mixing it up. So fun with the written word. All right, this is where I start invoking Confucius. I thought about it as, it as Fribble, which is an educational theory. I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, and finally, I do, I understand. But apparently it's originally from Confucius. And this is about if you've got something written down, you can have very precise definitions, but that's not a guarantee that people have understood the same thing. So, I mean, this is one dear to my heart. When the interpretations at issue, this is where lawyers actually start to earn money because that's where you, you get disputes. Another one dear to my heart, a mathematical specification. When I first worked in um, IT, we were using mathematical languages to specify computer programs but you still do have to have a model underlying it. You still have to have notation and you have to understand what it is. And again, it is yet another language to interpret. Is It does get used for things like critical systems. So things where safety is a tissue and you've got, it's worth spending the time and the resources to make sure that things are absolutely spot on but there is an overload in terms of who can actually understand it and who you've got to communicate to. And talking of mathematics, this is one that caught me out the other day. Um, I started talking about a histogram, which is the word that I'd been taught in school. And I had thought nothing more of it. And I'd seen bar charts, which come up with Excel spreadsheets. And I hadn't realized that they were, they were two different things and that there was a distinction. So that's an assumption I've been making all, all, my, all my life. So I have relearned. So 
Next poll, what's the document type? Again, no single right answer. Right, thank you. I do like this one because this is one that I keep coming against and it's one of the ones that I have to be very vigilant about when, when I'm working between um, subject matter experts and IT teams. And partly because when you're talking about document types, file formats are very important to people that are using computers and it's um you're, you're talking about how much space something is going to take up how it's actually going to be structured there's a lot that goes into that and it's got its own metadata but particularly my domain with lawyers what's actually the content of a document so that's how they're thinking about a document type and this is not easy because it is a phrase that gets used in different ways by different people and they do have to work together and it's, it's one that I'm constantly on my guard for. So constant vigilance through changes in personnel. And this one speaks to that, that particular term because you've got developers and consultants, they'll talk about document types. Technology specialist, so you might get the person who's doing data migration. So you might have actually established your vocabulary and then you bring somebody in to migrate the data. And of course, they want to know what the format is of everything. So you might have managed to educate other people in the development team. But of course, you know, you've now got someone who talks about docx and PDF and MP4. And the IT project team again, even if as a cross department project, you've, you've established a vocabulary, you might still find when the IT team together, then they will revert to what they know and what they're comfortable with. And project managers and BAs. And one of the reasons I put all those together is that with the best will in the world, ideally you would have one project team throughout the life of the project, but of course, project members change and every time somebody joins you've got to make sure that they will understand what the rest of the project are talking about so i have three more vocabulary questions again no right or wrong answer So the, the poll, this poll, that's about the creation date of a document. So the first option is the date of the first draft. The second one is when the document was first approved for uh, publication. And then the third one is when the document was put into Google Docs. Okay, I'll uh, give you a couple of more seconds to complete that and then we'll share the results. So here we are. Okay, right, thank you. Yes, I mean, this is one that is very much dear to my heart because it's a very easy one to get tripped up on. And it could be any of those. So it could be when you first created it. Yes, your first draft. It might be your the second one which is when you've actually approved a draft and said right the document's now ready to share with people and it could just as easily be the third one so if you're looking at a platform or you're looking at a folder on a system 
it's got its own metadata. Each file's got its own metadata, it's got creation date. And so that does actually mean something to anyone that's working with that, that platform of documents. And it's also one that's quite likely to overwrite whatever you thought it was. So um, it, it's a subject that's be, be, become very dear to my heart. And it's again, one of the ones that um, calls for constant vigilance. All right, next one. That's great. So the next one, next poll, uh, what is a KPI? That's, that's an interesting one. Um, first option is whether it's a metric for measuring business benefits. The second option is a single headline number in a report. The third one is a target for personal performance. So yeah, so make your, your choice in the poll and we'll re review the results in a bit. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll share these results now. Thank you. And here we are. Right. Oh, I'm glad they're not all landing on the same one. <laughs> <laughs> I have encountered all of these. Um, the bottom one, the target for personal performance, is the first one that I ever had, which is it does get used for personal performance. And I have worked um, with a system in which that was used to indicate the measures that were used for people's performance. And the top one is a very common one for business analysis. And again, how you me measuring the benefit to the business. The one in the middle I've lobbed in because I have actually come across it when I've been asked to provide a specification for a report platform. And it said KPIs. And I gave them the description of the top one my metric for measuring business benefits. And actually what they wanted was, is there one number that you want to put at the top of the report to bring to everyone's attention? And essentially it's the same thing, but they're actually asking for um, sort of a tile on the report for what you want to put in there. So it's asking for one thing, but um, I didn't understand what they needed to know from me in order to do that. Have I shared the results? Yeah, we, we had those results. I think, oh, you, but, you've actually um, shared them. Okay, that's good. Are. I will. Overkill. Okay. Yeah, always good to share. <laughs> I think it's, it's on to uh, our next poll now, isn't it? It is taxonomy. I think okay. this is the last one. Oh, taxonomy. So oh. the first choice, um, that's the formal classification of plants or species. The second one is term set for a data system. And last but not least is the specialized vocabulary for a subject matter domain. So we got some folks coming in. Okay, let's... Uh... Let's shut this one down and see what the results are. Yes, oh, brilliant. I like this one because if you look it up, if you Google the term taxonomy, it will come up with the first one. Every, almost all the results will be to do with um, classifying plants. But in the IT um, arena, it's now starting to mean how you organize the data and how you organize the subject matter that's going into a system. And it's something I hadn't realized isn't in everybody's vocabulary. So I've actually worked in a couple of systems where people say, what is a taxonomy? And they start giving me very strange pronunciations of it um, just to make me laugh. But I think it is becoming common use. And yes, it is a specialist vocabulary. And so that's where as a BA, you will be going around to your subject matter experts and learning about the vocabulary they want to use, for example, to tag documents. But then of course, it's going to turn into 
something like a term set when it gets into the system. So your, your job is converting a special vocabulary into something that is going to be used in the system. And yes, this is one for the glossary when you're on a project. Um, so absolutely vital for knowledge systems. I think I've just explained that converting uh, specialized vocabulary and how, how you organizing your data, how you're going to visualize it. The taxonomy helps with that. And again, coming back to my favorite, vague bits and pieces turning them into structured information. And again, it's a common reference for people. So going back to the BA skills, I've organized them into bars this time. So the first one, requirements. This is the first point at which maybe you're starting to understand the language that you're um, product managers and users are using. So keep the language dialogue going, have an ear open for the language that they're using. Converting your vague, vague bits and pieces. So understand what they are, what's the structure and find some way to embed that for when the system's actually in place and you're in business as usual. Proficiency in requirements modeling. So you've got your requirements, who are the KPIs for? And how, how do you describe them? And then finally, communication. Look at the business language, look at the technology. How are you going to form the bridge between nodes and make sure that you stand the best chance of expressing the requirements that your stakeholders have and getting those explained and implemented? So thank you all very much for your attention. And I would like to thank Alan, Marion and Monique who've helped me and let me do my dry run. And particularly Monique, because she's actually kept me on track over the last couple of weeks and helped me to target the BA community, as well as having my rather quirky sort of um, general knowledge. Very well. Okay, thank you. over to the discussion. Do you want me to stop sharing? Yeah, if we could stop sharing, that would be good. I will stop sharing. Yeah, go on. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's really there good. You go. Thank you so much, Sally. That's uh, a good walkthrough of your your thoughts. I, I've got a question. <laughs> <laughs> so I think one of the things that um, jumped out on your taxonomy was about a glossary. Is that mm -hmm. something that you um, kind of set out to do on every project? And uh, is it a document that is continually evolving and that people find useful. And I've got another question kind of wrapped into that as well. Or is it uh, another one of these assets that a BA spends a lot of time kind of putting together and care and attention with making sure that that language is right and everyone understands it and then no one uses it? That is an interesting question. Um, it, it's very difficult, isn't it, to get to get it right? Because if you're going to do a glossary properly, you do have to put some effort into it. Um, I think it is good to actually have a common reference. And at the end of the day, if you, for me, the key is to actually put it somewhere where people can find it and make sure they knew, know where they can find things. Because for me, I have a bigger challenge in projects where people have their own pet copies of things or they'll make their own document and squirrel it away so the main thing is actually bringing any anything that's useful to everybody making sure that it's up there and it's available is it something that you would share with your kind of i say users but maybe customers is a better word now um or, or is it something you know an asset that would definitely stay within the project team um probably depends what it's for i mean if it if it's one if it's um a project team that's actually going to make sort of longer term use of it or if it's just for the length of the project then i suppose it would stay with them 
but it may well be, particularly if you're doing something like a subject matter taxonomy, you do actually want something that um, you're going to share with clients because you're hoping they'll, they'll use it in future. And um, in some cases, well, I deal with knowledge systems. So in, in, in that case, they need to invest in it for the quality of their own system. So yes, it depends on the situation. Sure. Have we got anything else for Sally? Okay, over to you, Monique. Yeah, sure. So we got our, our next event lined up already. So we will have um, Darren uh, from NetWest to share with us um, his view of having a common definition of Agile. And I think that's really useful because the in our uh, birthday party, some of our uh, community members mentioned that it would be good to understand a bit more on how they can explain Agile as a concept to senior management. And I think for, for some, of, some of our attendees, they mentioned that they're actually quite new in terms of using Agile. So it would be good to understand um, agile more. So this would be a perfect event for, for those who would like to, um, I think for those who are new to agile or, and also for those who, who are experienced in agile and maybe after the event, you can really check whether you, you know agile or whether you would pose some challenges to, to Darren in terms of his definition of agile. So yeah, so that would be a good one. And yeah, and just uh, please continue share our um, our web pages, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter with uh, your network. It's always good to to bring more expertise in these events so we can do more exchange of ideas. Yeah, and if you are interested in sharing your own experience, do contact us. Um, and also, if you want to become one of the the organizers of BA Slash. Um, speak to us as well. Would love to to have you on board, and we can bring more stories to the community. So yeah, so thank you very much. I think what we will do, we'll stop the recording, and uh, we'll just have go into have different breakout rooms for further discussion. So yeah, but thank you so much for coming to this event, and look forward to meeting you again in the the next one in June. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.